Because, girl, you could wake up the next morning and you will have these ingrowns and it is not cute. What is up, you guys? It is Jolly and Nike. As you could probably tell by the title, I'm obviously back with another video. And today's video is going to be on how I do my DIY vajayshals at home while preventing ingrown hairs and hyperpigmentation. So if you would like to see this type of thing, this is a video, just keep on watching it. Also, if you wanna become part of the tribe, because girl, we would love to have you here, go ahead and tap that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time that I upload and you don't never miss another one. Okay, y'all. So, there are different types of hair removals. We all know there's laser, there's razor, there's nair, there's waxing, all that. So, which, whatever type of hair removal that you use, there is a very strong likelihood that you could get an ingrown hair or discoloration, especially being a woman of color any woman you could get discoloration down there this is how i discovered that i could prevent all of that on myself so i'm just gonna go ahead and share that with you guys especially because it could possibly help one of you or all of you i don't know but i just want to say a quick disclaimer before using any of these products down there please do a skin patch test just to confirm that it's not going to break your skin out before you put it down there and have your girl looking crazy okay so with that being said, let's just hop right into it. So the two main types of hair removal that I use regularly for myself is razor, which I shave, um, and nair. Okay, I prefer these two just because I don't like how it feels after a wax and the hair grows back. But I just prefer to either shave or use Nair. Lately, I've been using a lot of Nair, but I don't care what nobody says. Nair does not prevent ingrown hairs because since I tried it, it didn't work for me. It didn't. I tried it and I didn't do my little vajayshal routine and your girl ended up with the ingrown hair and I was devastated because it hurts, number one. And number two, it's not cute. We want to keep our girl soft and supple like we are. If you like to shave, I recommend using a men's razor because girl, I don't know what it is about men's razors, but they get the job done for sure. Um, but if you prefer to use a woman's razor, just use a razor with about five blades or more if you can find some. As of lately, I have been using the Nair Shower Power and I use this one, which is the sensitive formula and it has coconut oil in it. I definitely recommend using sensitive, especially if you're putting her down there on your girl. Like, you could get away with not be using sensitive on your legs or something like that, but please get the sensitive one if you want to try this out, just so you can make sure that it doesn't give you no harm down there. Like, nobody has time to be burnt up. We're trying to prevent those issues. If you don't want to use Nair, you can shave or wax or what have you, and this should still work for you either way. Um, cause I do use it after I shave as well. Um, but waxing just ain't my thing y'all. I tried it. I probably can do it on myself, but it's just not it right now. Post shaving or hair removal of any kind. I do my DIY Vijay show, which this video is obviously all about. Pretty much what I do is I exfoliate using a sugar scrub, um, either a homemade sugar scrub or just one I purchased out of the store like Tree Hut brand or something like that um, And I exfoliate or I also use these little exfoliating cloths They look like this you can get them out of Walmart. I got this one out of Dollar Tree So I use these two together, which this is the Dr. Bronner's Castile baby soap um, I use it on the outside as well with my exfoliating cloth but I love these like they feel so good I bought a whole bunch of them so you can just toss it once you finish well you can use it many times but I just toss it once I'm done using it once it's stretched and pulled it's like a super long washcloth but it's kind of rough so it exfoliates the skin very very well and I definitely use it down there especially whenever I am about to do my DIY vajay shows so I use it I scrub on the outside girl because you do not want to be scrubbing on the inside of your girl like no then 
once I finish exfoliating, obviously I'll rinse, rinse my body, get everything clean, you know. And then I will go in with my bajacial ingredients. Well, I only use three ingredients. I use Aztec clay. I use this on my face. I use this everywhere. Like, if you haven't tried this, you need to because it's great. It. One thing I can say about it, though, is it does dry your skin out like really bad but obviously if you don't want like any bumps or pimples or things like that you need your skin to be a little bit drier so that the oil buildup doesn't affect anything and by no means am i esthetician this is just what works for me so if it does not work for you please 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 just don't continue trying it this stuff pulls out all of the toxins that cause the ingrowns. And the second thing that I use in my DIY bajacial is turmeric powder. It is mainly for lightening properties. So that prevents the hyperpigmentation and the darkness that you could get in that area. So I use about a tablespoon of the Aztec clay and then I use a teaspoon of this. This is the last ingredient that I use in my DIY bajayshows. It is the Bragg's apple cider vinegar, honey. If you ain't on this yet, you need to get on it. With that being said, I mix all of those ingredients together. Obviously, I only have a little bit of the Bragg's left because I just make it into the consistency that I want using the brag so if it's too thick i'll just add more once i have mixed my ingredients together i use these little wooden sticks i prefer using the wooden sticks rather than like a silicone spatula or something like that to apply my mask just because you can toss these wooden sticks in the trash once you're done you don't have to worry about any type of cleanup and that's what i like that is why i use these but of course you can use whatever you want to just to apply it um, and once I've applied it, I leave it there for 30 minutes or longer, depending on what you're doing. But most of the time I leave it there for about 20 to 30 minutes. And after that, I wash it off. Once you finish doing your mask, you do not want to put immediate moisture back in there because we just try to dry it out. So that way it does not cause any type of ingrowns. So the next thing is 10 skin. Tin skin you can purchase from Target, Walmart, Amazon, I believe. Also, I'm pretty sure you can purchase it from Amazon too. Personally, I try to use it after I am dried off and my pores are closed because, girl, I don't want to be hot down there, okay? After I use the tin skin, I usually go in with this benzoyl peroxide, the 10%. This came from Target. Um, I just rub a thin, thin layer. I've had this for so long, but I just rub a thin layer on top of her because this also has drying properties and you want to keep her dry after hair removal just so that those ingrowns and do not start to form because girl you could wake up the next morning and you will have these ingrowns and it is not cute and also if you would like to because I use this on my body sometimes if I feel like I'm having like some type of acne breakout or something on my body I'll go in with Panoxo Acne Foaming Wash. You can also use it down there, but just on the outside, please. It's a deep cleansing wash and it has benzoyl peroxide in it as well. So if you don't wanna do both, you can just do one or the other, but sometimes I do use this as well. So the next day is when I usually want to start putting moisture back into my skin. And as y'all probably already know, my favorite moisturizer is just basic old Vaseline. Um, there are so many other types of moisturizer that you guys can use, but this is just my personal favorite. If you don't like this, because a lot of people do believe that this is too thick, um, you don't have to use this. Sometimes I also go in with shea butter. Personally, I just prefer shea butter um, on top of the Vaseline, but that's just me. I don't put it on top of the Vaseline down there, but you could also use shea butter. The shea butter that I use it looks like this it is almost gone so i definitely need to get another one um this is the 100 percent african shea butter and it leaves the skin feeling just so soft and supple yeah i definitely recommend trying it but only after you test these products if you have never used them before 
um, just to make sure that it doesn't cause you any type of irritation. Or All right, y'all, so that is it for the video. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and tap that notification bell so that you're notified every single time that I upload and you don't never miss another one. Also, we would like for you to join the tribe. So if you want to, because we talk, we discussed this in the beginning of the video, but we're going to discuss it again. So if you want to join the tribe, come on to the family. Give me a hug. Yeah, for real, for real, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video.